Hi everyone, Helen Blunden here at Activate Learn on Twitter. Thought I would do something that I've seen other YouTubers do, which is have a bookshelf tour. So I thought today I'm going to explain some of the books that we have on this shelf here and also that shelf over there and maybe a little bit over there. Now, I'm someone who loves to borrow books and as such, I am a library card holder of about seven libraries that are in the area. So you might not be aware that Melbourne has different council areas, which are, is just really local government. And each local government area has about four or five libraries, maybe even more in their area. And as where we live touches on three of those local councils, I've got access to a whole heap of different libraries where I can borrow and also drop the books back whenever I need to. I thought today I'm going to actually talk about this bookshelf here. And as you can see, it's a bit higgledy-piggledy. It's all different sizes and that's because it's homemade. And that bookshelf over there. Now, this little bookshelf here is mine. Sorry, mine and mine. And all these books, the majority of them are my husband's. And he has put them all in alphabetical order, whereas I haven't gotten around to putting them in alphabetical order just yet. Now, we have very different tastes when it comes to books, uh, when it comes to music, when it comes to a lot of things, actually. We completely at opposite ends of everything, really. But I thought I'd show you some of his books and interspersed with them are mine. Now, we're so different when it comes to books. I'm the spine cracker. <laughs> He's not. He likes all his books in alphabetical order. I don't really care. I like to write and put marginalia into my books and make notes in them. Definitely, he's not someone who does that. So let's have a look at what some of these books are. Let's start right from the top. As you can see, we've got a lot of Geoffrey Archer novels. Now, I like Geoffrey Archer. I've always loved his books. He's an excellent storyteller. So some of these books are some of my husband's and some of mine as well. And we've pretty much read most of Geoffrey Archer. We go down further and as you can see here, can you see the Paul Oster book? See the Paul Oster? Yeah, that's mine. That's right next to The Exorcist. That's, uh, that's Andrew's. And in fact, all of Clive Barker is Andrew's. I must say, I haven't read any of Clive Barker's books except for this one, which I really enjoyed, which was Mr. Mr. Be Gone. Here we go, this one. Uh, Louis de Bernier's, I love Louis de Bernier's, so these books are my own. And as we go down, we could see Tom Clancy, We're in the Seas. Some of these books are mine, some of them are Andrew's. Uh, Andrews, yeah, um, got Agatha Christie, but with regards to Tom Clancy, oh God, I bought some of these when I was in the Navy, like The Hunt for Red October. They were really good books just to understand naval warfare and the technology, but um, I doubt I would read any nowadays. As we go down, some of these books are mine, simply because I prefer classics and modern literature, whereas my husband prefers the more contemporary, I guess, um, current novels that you'd find on the bookshelves. So as you can see, more of Tom Clancy. All of these classics are pretty much mine. So D.H. Lawrence, we've got Plato, Robert Louis Stevenson, Wilde, Oscar Wilde, and a lot of the classics. These are my husband's, um, H.G. Wells and so forth. And some more here, which is Bryce Courtney. They're all mine. And a lot of the, uh, whatchamacallits? Well, they're classics here. Some of them Australian. Some of them are just uh, from different uh, different authors. So let's go up to the E's. Andrew is a huge Ben Elton fan, so as you can see, we've got them all there. I've read some of his books, I don't mind them, as well as right at the end, they're, they're all Ian Fleming. Uh, some very old books that were just passed down in the family. Got some Ken Follett. Now, I bought these secondhand, and 
I must admit, I have never read any of his books and I don't even know where I bought them. But I thought, you never know, I might find them interesting. I have yet to read them. So if you are any fans of Ken Follett out there, let me know. But Stephen Fry, I love Stephen Fry. These are um, a couple of books I've read of his, um, Heroes, sorry, Mythos uh, Heroes, but I haven't read Troy as yet. Neil Gaiman, we've got all the Neil Gaiman ones. These are all my husband's and some of Robert Galth, Galbraith, which uh, you might know them as uh, the lady who wrote Harry Potter. <laughs> so I don't know, some of these are mine, which I haven't read as yet. Water for Elephants, Helen of Troy. I've got a couple of Helen of Troy books. Joanna Harris, they're all mine. Harris, Thomas Harris is another author that is all of my husband's. Um, I've only really read this one of Tom Harris and really enjoyed it. It was Fatherland. What if Hitler had won the war? What would life have been like um, if that had happened? So that was interesting. Now we go right down to the H's and we've reached Joe Hill. Some of you might know Joe Hill as the son of Stephen King. He's an author in his own right, as you can see. There's a whole heap of books that he's got. And then we've got Hornby here, which are mine. In fact, all of these are mine, as you can see. James Herbert, who uh, is, uh, I guess, a writer, a horror genre writer. Now, this is not a genre I read, so these are all my husband's books. So going right down, uh, these are my books, Zorba the Greek by Kazanzakis and uh, Confederacy of the Dunces, which is a really good book. Um, they're my books. And One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, very good. But as you can see here, we've got all of Stephen King's novels, every single one. Now, my husband is the fan of uh, Stephen King, huge, huge fan. Majority of these have been read. And um, for me, I have read some of them. I must admit, I prefer his novels that are not the horror related. Um, but I did enjoy one that he wrote on writing, which was just brilliant. I've got some nonfiction down there at the bottom as well that is in no particular order. Now, we continue on with King and we head into Layman. Layman is... Again, another horror genre. I have never read his books nor have any interest to reading because, like I said, horror is not my thing. But we did recently buy a whole stack of the I-11 collection and I did do a review on Sliver. So I'm really looking forward to reading uh, his other books up there. I found him highly readable, very, um, very interesting read. Going right down, we've got a continuation of Lehman, but we've got all the Stig Larson and obviously when Larson passed away it continued on with David Lagerkrantz, all of Dexter, Alistair McLean. These are all my husband's whereas these ones are mine. Anything to do with history which I love. Cormac McCarthy that's all mine. Gabriel Garcia Marquez that's mine. Life of Pi which I haven't read as yet that's mine. James Patterson, that's my husband's, and Peyton Place, that's mine. <laughs> so you're getting an idea of exactly what we both like and how very different we are. So as you can see, a lot of Patterson books, um, not all of them, of course. These are the ones that are, I guess, favourites of my husband's. We've got more of Ian McEwan. He's one of my favourite uh, writers uh, with Atonement. Um, George Orwell, my favourite. And we go right down, we've got continuation of Jane Patterson. We've got a whole heap, Jodie Picoult. Now, I know a lot of people like her books, but I'm neither here or there with her books. I don't know why, but look, I've got one and I have read some others. And I guess, I guess each to their own, right? <laughs> um, this one was interesting, the nautical chart. Again, I've got an interest in nautical history, so this was an interesting one. Now, Matthew Riley is an Australian author. He's very readable. If you've ever read his books, they're more like, like you're reading an action movie. They're very, very quick reads, very short chapters. All of these are my husband's. He's read a few of them. I can never tell which ones he's read because he's simply, he doesn't crack a spine. He, he keeps it in pristine condition, as you can see. Whereas my books, 
well, you can tell my books. <laughs> We're going on with Matthew Riley and we've got Anne Rice. Now, these are all my husband's books. Anne Rice here again. I read some of her books. We get heading into Harry Potter. All these books are my husband's. I have read all of Harry Potter and they've just gone a bit, the colour's a bit off. I think it's because of the sunlight coming in. But anyway... Some of J.K. Rowling, Lionel Shriver, They're All Mine, Zadie Smith, All Mine, Tolkien, Mine, Steve Tolt's Fraction of the Whole Mine, Stephen, Sue Townsend, or the Adrian Mole, and The Slap, That's Mine. Chris Siakas is an Australian author who writes some very interesting uh, books on all sorts of different topics. So, uh, yeah, That Slap was really interesting. Now, P.J. Tracy. Uh, my husband is huge PJ Tracy fans, got all this author's books, and we continue on. Now, as you can see, you're probably saying, Helen, uh, they're not in any particular order. You got your B's there right at the end. Well, that's because we kind of ran out of room, and my stuff, this is Bill Bryson is all mine, plus the Great Escape Rule, that's all mine. Um, and any history to do with Crete, that's all mine. But as you can see, we continue on over there. Now, from here to there, there's a very big difference. Now, I mentioned before that we've just got very different tastes, and you already saw that the books that my husband likes are all, I guess, current books, current authors, whereas I like the literature, modern literature. But at the same time, none of my books are also in any alphabetical order, simply because I haven't put them in order. Usually I would put them in order, but for now... I remember where I've placed them. So if you want a book, you know, if people ask me, hey, have you got this book? I'll know exactly where I've put it and on which bookshelf, because we've got bookshelves in nearly every room. So these are just one, two, three, four shelves here in this one room. We've got some others as well. So yeah, so these are my books. And usually what I do is if I really love an author, I'll buy their collection, like Orwell uh, and some others, or I'm in the process of getting more of their books, and I want to keep the, the, their books for my own collection, and I want to get the physical book. I do have a Kindle, and I do enjoy reading on the Kindle, but I must admit, I do prefer the physical uh, book. But So effectively, I would buy the book if I wanted to keep it. Now, some of the books are, are bought new, but a lot also are bought secondhand or, or they have been given to me. So let's have a look at what's on this shelf. So in this shelf, as you can see, there is absolutely no order to things. Basically, the taller books have gone into the shelf with the bigger space. So there's, there's really no order. But we we'll start with Peter Fitzsimmons. Now, Peter Fitzsimmons is an Australian author and researcher and he's written so many books all to do with history and I've only got a few of his books and I would love to have all of his collection one day which I endeavour to get over over time so I've got some this one is on um, Bly on Mutiny on the Bounty which is another piece of history that I love and enjoy reading about got some Captain Cook uh, books as well. But as you can see, Louis de Berniers is here in Hell of, of Troy, which I haven't read. More of Kazanzaki, some Curlo, some uh, Ian McEwan. And um, these books I have not read. I don't even know why they're there. And they usually, I bought them secondhand. So yeah, I really don't know anything about them. But up here, these were some books I did a review of recently, like Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, Taylor, George Orwell, two of his books, and this one, Story of the Eye. I haven't done a review on that simply because I detested it so much. I hated it. Don't want to even want it part of this shelf at all. And so here we go. We've got Ernest Hemingway, Paul Oster, he's here again, <laughs> Bukowski, Raymond Carver, who I loved. I loved the books. I would really like to read some more of Carver. And Italo Calvino, Invisible Cities, which 
I love this book. This is one of my favorite books. It's just beautiful. You should see the review I did on this. I think I just raved, raved about it so much. We got Roald Dahl. We got Orwell, our collection of his essays on truth. Sylvia Plath, Margaret Atwood. Now, this author, love this author. She was a German uh, young lady during World War II. She hated the Nazis, but she wrote uh, she wrote these few books, which I loved, and that's hence why I bought them. So her name is Ermgard Kern. Uh, you should check her out. Got Franz Kafka. We've got an Argentinian author, Ernest Sabato, The Tunnel, which was brilliant. David Malouf is also an excellent, excellent Australian author. His writing is just magical. Uh, I would love to have more of David Malouf's books. Now, all of these books, I, I can only find them kind of secondhand. So I've got to go scrounging for them. We've got Mulan Kundera, McEwen, David Malouf again, Flyaway Peter, so beautiful. Muriel Sparks. Now, these ones are all Australian authors. <clears throat> the only one I've read so far is this Cafe Scarizade, which I did a review on recently. Graham Greene, Travels With My Art. It was brilliant. Um, Emil Zola. We've got a Russian author. We've got Borges. More of Graham Greene and Paul Curlo. Karl Marx. And, of course, Umberto Eco had a spot. A fascist. Right, down here. So you're probably recognising a lot of these because I've already done reviews of them. So I come to this little library and kind of pick out a book and then read it and do a review. Martin Amos was fa a fairly recent edition. I really just bought the book because Christopher Sheachins was on the front cover. I've not read any of Martin Amos' book books, but I am looking forward to reading more of his stuff. Tony Morrison, I'm looking forward to reading Beloved. Ernest Hemingway, uh, Old Man in the Sea, and also The Catcher in the Rye, two of my favourite, favourite books, along with Calvino's Invisible Cities. This one, The Catcher in the Rye, I fell in love with this book. I fell in love with Holden Caulfield. I, I read the book twice. Like, I finished it, and then I read it again because I simply didn't want it to finish. And then I carried the book for three months in my bag, and basically read it because I felt that I, it just had to be near me. I really resonated with the Holden Caulfield character. I thought I thought Salinger was actually writing about me. <laughs> so there you go. So what else have we got? Evelyn Waugh. We've got more George Orwell, Martin Luther King. More of Graham Greene. I haven't read these books. I've read The Quiet American, which was really good. I really enjoy Graham Greene's books and I want to get more of them. We've got Goethe, we've got Procopius, The Secret History. This one I read recently, but I didn't do a review of it. It's pretty gross. If you want to know what the Romans got up to, read this book. It was quite disgusting, <laughs> quite lewd as to what they got up to. Joseph Heller, Catch-22. This is a funny story. I won, some years back, I won a lottery, right? But I didn't. I didn't have money to buy the lottery and it was either buying Catch-22 a book or buying a lottery ticket. And so what I did was the book that I wanted to buy was Catch-22, but I didn't end up buying Catch-22. I actually bought a lottery ticket and that lottery, lottery ticket won me about $2,000 back then, which was enough to, to get me on an overseas trip. And when I came back from the overseas trip, I bought Catch-22 and then I never even got around to reading it. There you go. We've got the Divine Comedy, Dante, which is actually my husband's, but I wouldn't mind reading it. We've got Virginia Woolf, C.S. Forrester, Evgenidis, Jeffrey Evgenidis, um, The English Patient, which I enjoyed, and I know many people despised, but I didn't mind it. And, of course, all of Alan Baton's and Michael Palin, his... Um, trips and then up here we've got Nassim Nicholas Taleb uh, I've got all of his books Black Spawn which I recently finished just reading so I've got Anti-Fragile, Fooled by Randomness, we've got Bed of Crusties and then I've got The Skin in the Game which is in one of the other bookshelves. Really got to put some order to things and if I move over here I've got yeah my travel I don't want to part with these just just yet uh, as we travel we get the lonely planet guides um well we used to not anymore <laughs> and i've got here uh, this is my you might not know it i i served in uh, the royal australian navy i was an officer in the 
in the Australian Navy for many years, about oh, 11 years. And this was our port of the class that went through our officer training. So that was a junior naval command course that I did back in 91. It's probably just vinegar by now. All uh, right, so what have we got here? We've got Ian Kershaw, the Helen Back. Now this book is really interesting. It's so dense and I've been reading it for many years. It's simply because I, it's not a book you'd read in one sitting. It is so dense with information on what happened in all of the countries of Europe before, just before World War One, in between the years of World War One and World War Two, and just after World War Two, but it is so thick and so dense with information, and utterly amazing to read how the world got to the point of two world wars, and what were the conditions, the economics, the politics the situations happening at the time to to warrant people fighting and getting them, themselves killed. Richard Feidler, who also is an Australian author and he's written a few books which we've got up here, uh, is very readable. So he's written one called Saga Land about stories of stories of the Vikings and the Northern Europeans and also the Golden Maze which is a story of, I'm trying to think of the city again. I'm trying to recall the city. Let's have a look at what it is. Um, I should know. Let's have, oh, here we go. The story of Prague. This would be very interesting. So I'm looking forward to reading that. And as you can see, this was a review I did on the Code Breakers of Central Bureau. I did that recently by David Dufty. Really enjoyed this book too. I've got all the horrible histories. I love horrible histories. I think it's such a brilliant idea to be able to teach children history in such a way that is very readable and entertaining. And in fact, all their books can be for adults as well. I went through traveling through the UK and as I went through the UK, I bought the horrible histories little book so I could read it. And it was just enough to understand the history. So going through Scotland and reading the very quick history, the horrible history about Scotland, you got an appreciation. But of course, I did get different uh, historical texts. But I think horrible histories just gives you enough to be able to immerse yourself and have fun with it. And then be intrigued and be curious and then go on a rabbit warren tour of something else. I, I love the horrible histories. I, I think anyone who does this gets children interested in history is great. And I've got some more history books here. Rob Mundell is another Australian author who, again, I love, but he writes a, uh, about naval, Australian naval history, maritime history. I've read all of his books. They're all brilliant. I'm a mad, huge fan of Bly, the master mariner, he was the dude for Mutiny on the Bounty. I fell in love with this guy in the sense of, he's just brilliant. you got to read his story. And we've got also True Gert, David Hunt. He has basically written Australian history in a very amusing way. And both his books, The Unauthorised History of Australia, Gert, and then True Gert, Volume 2, both very good books, highly readable, very amusing. And we've got Bill Bailey here at the end, The Remarkable Guide to Happiness, which I also did a review on. I love Bill Bailey. He's my most favourite comedian, very smart man, knows how to play a lot of instruments. I love his comical style as well. <laughs> so very funny. And down here, just some more additional. Peter Aykroyd. Now, he's written a few books and uh, I got this one because it was all to do with London. I haven't read the book but I am looking forward to reading this and also Les Carlion on the history of Gallipoli. Again Australian author, brilliant book and ending with Yanis Varoufakis who I was really amazed just by reading about the situation of what when he was uh, Greece's finance minister what had transpired there and also this one is one of my favourites from Varoufakis simply because it's written in such a way that it's easy to understand. And it's actually called Talking to My Daughter About the Economy, A Brief History of Capitalism. And just the way he writes, 
I think this is really good for anyone who wants to understand how to explain the economy in very simple terms. That's it for the three bookshelves. Uh, this one here, I do have another one over there, <laughs> but I'll do that for another time. I think I think that is enough for you today, <laughs> just to get an idea of kind of like the books that we read. Now we've got a ton of other books on Kindle. Yeah, so it gives you an idea of when I look for a book, I kind of just look first at what we've got currently and what needs to be read first. I would much rather read a book first as what, what we've got. But sometimes, you know, when I visit a library, oh, I can never get out of a library empty handed. So I'll always get a book, but there's no rhyme or reason as to what I read. As long as I'm reading, that's enough for me. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the bookshelf tour and I will see you soon.